All right, so uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's uh, great to be here at SAS Kaspersky. Uh, today, we're going to give you an overview about some of our recent research regarding tracking internet threats using graphs and uh, visualization. So who am I? My name is Dia Majoub. I work as senior security researcher at OpenDNS. Uh, I did my PhD on graph theory applied on sensor networks, and currently my focus is data analysis, graphs, and uh, DNS. Hi, everyone. I'm Thibaut Rey. I'm security researcher at OpenDNS. I am also the creator of Open Graffiti, which is our data visualization platform. And the main uh, focus of my research uh, are obviously 3D data visualization, but also real-time systems, all applied to security. All right, so what's on the agenda of today? So we're going to start with an overview of OpenDNS's uh, global network, and then we'll dive into a few models we, we use, uh, mainly uh, domain IP uh, monitoring, and exploring DGAs using graphs and visualization, and then finally, uh, an interesting approach in analyzing maliciousness on the ASN network. So this is the map of our data centers. We have 23 of them across four continents. That allows us to see a lot of traffic, mainly DNS of two types. So we have the recursive uh, traffic, which is basically be between the users and our resolvers. And then we have the authoritative traffic, which allows us to build the passive DNS, which is the traffic between our resolvers and the uh, authoritative name servers of the internet. Now, this is a quick uh, look at the web UI of our, of our um, threat intelligence platform. So you type a artifact of interest, whether it's a domain, an IP, or an ASN, in that text box. And then, in this case, we're just showing like a small snapshot. Uh, SAS Kaspersky had a few traffic spikes towards the end of January, probably because people were interested in uh, planning for visit, applying or uh, attending. So we can have like the traffic pattern, but also a lot of other uh, features about the domain or the entity of interest. <coughs> In a very few words, um, what we do at OpenDNS is basically build a graph database all inferred from our DNS logs. So here you have an example of a data set extracted uh, from wikileaks.org. As you can see, we have different kinds of entities, domain, IPs, ASNs, who is data, and then co-occurrences related domain. But we're going to come back to this later. A couple of metrics about the size of the graph that we're having. We're seeing about 70 plus billion DNS queries per day. And uh, after refinement on the authoritative side, um, only considering domain and IPs, that gives us a graph that is about um, 46 million nodes per day and 174 million edges per day. And this is only considering domain and IPs. Now let's take a look at the first uh, way we can use this data. So the first one is looking at domain IP associations and monitor that over time. Um, we're taking one example here. So all of us are familiar with FastFlux uh, uh, domains. So here we're taking a look at the ZBot FastFlux proxy network. This is the hosting as a service infrastructure used to host malware CNCs. And you recognize it by looking at FastFlux domains with a TTL of 150 seconds. Uh, we've been tracking this for a few years. And when we uh, delved deeper, we saw that uh, this platform was hosting CNCs for a variety of malware families. On the left-hand side, you have Zeus variants, so Zeus, Citadel, Kins, and Ice9, with all of the uh, different URLs. And then also on the right-hand side, we have other malware families. Um, most notable ones is Zeus came over. It used this platform for a day when it re-emerged in, uh, in July. But then recently, towards the mi middle of uh, November, we saw that Tiny Banker started hosting a lot of its CNCs on this platform. When Dia conducted his research, that led us um, to collaborate together to create a nice visual. Essentially, what you're looking at here is um, a graph that is evolu um, the evolution graph over time of all the domain IP mappings of the FastFlux network. Um, it's about the period of three months. And what you see here is basically the two CNC domains in red and the IPs in blue. Um, after further investigation, you can see that we have a growing pool of IPs and domains. And the domains keep hopping from one IP to another. So the IPs keep getting recycled. And this is uh, over a period of three months. We were able to create you know, this timeline 
because uh, we have a data that is accessible in our uh, you know, database. This is pretty much the first time, the first time we've seen an IP map to a domain in the last time. Now our second model here is what we call the co-occurrences model. Let's uh, explain it uh, in a high level. So what we do is we take our query logs and then we build a bipartite graph between the client IPs and domains, pretty simple. And then we take time uh, windows, snapshots. And then the idea is that every time we see a domains being looked up by the same clients within a short time period, we'll build an edge in this co-occurrences graph. Despite being quite simple, this model is uh, very useful and, and powerful in a lot of cases. So we use it to track uh, domains that are sharing the same kind of theme or, or uh, campaign. So for example, security sites. So in this case, we're having metasploit.com. So people who go there, they will also go to sites such as securityintelligence.com, Wireshark, Rapid7, bugzilla.redhat, etc., etc. We also use this for tracking carding sites and other hacking platforms because visitors to these sites, they will also go to th some other uh, related um, websites. And then finally, the most important part here is that we use this to track botnet CNCs, especially uh, DGAs. And the third case I'll mention here is that we also use it for tracking ex infection chains between, let's say, compromised sites leading to exploit kit uh, infections. So the first case here about using this co-occurrences model is exploring DGAs. So we took a few uh, malware samples that are using DGA approaches. So we have Ramnet, TinyBanker, Emotet, and Xpiro. And these are mainly uh, either information stealers or uh, bank introgens. And what we do here, uh, we extract uh, the domains that are related to a specific malware, starting from a seed domain, from the big co-occurrences graph. And what we end up seeing is a subgraph from the big one that has a very interesting structure. So this one is what we call a regular chain. Why a chain? Because you have a starting point, it's a succession of nodes and edges, and then it doesn't loop back. So it just goes uh, node, edge, node, edge, till the end. And, th and then regular because uh, the nodes, uh, either most of them or all of them, share the same number of uh, neighbors or degree. This is quite interesting how you see the very uh, regular structure of this uh, co-occurrence graph. We often uh, observe a variation of this regular chain. Uh, this one, we call it the irregular chain. The main difference is that all the nodes don't necessarily have the same degree, meaning um, they don't have the same number of neighbors if you actually follow the chain. It, overall, it follows the chain structure, but not in every place. Um, as you can see on the visual, um, you have also a particle that is floating uh, between the nodes. This is what we call the co-occurrence score. And in other words, it's basically the amount of transitional traffic that we see coming from domain A to domain B. The next structure we see here is also one of my favorites. So we have a kind of a circuit because it loops back to, uh, to the beginning and regular because, the, again, the nodes, uh, most of them or all of them have the same degree or number of neighbors. This is kind of a tunnel view of this uh, sequence of lookups from infected machines towards uh, DGA domains. And I can just let you take a look at it for a few seconds. These are quite fascinating structures that we are able also to detect uh, from the big graph. Same thing with this one, irregular circuit. So the whole topology follows like a circuit shape. Uh, but however, we see discontinuities, like some, uh, some nodes are connecting back to different um, kind of random places on the graph. Uh, but it's still a circuit. Uh, however, it's very regular. That's why we call it irregular circuit. And then this uh, one here. Uh, in fact, I want to say that all of the circuits, they were related to tiny banker. So somehow, the structure of the the chain and the behavior of the malware uh, when it looks up the DGAs makes that it loops back to the beginning. Uh, this one here is what we call a thick irregular circuit. Circuit again because it loops back, irregular because of the unevenly distribution of degrees, and then thick because it has some very dense parts in the graph in, um, uh, scattered across a, uh, a long uh, circuit. And again, this is like one of the cool ones. 
to uh, detect in the big uh, co-occurrences graph. And finally, uh, last structure we're going to see today is what we call the labyrinth. So this one is much more disorganized. So you have basically, it uh, starts with a kind of a chain that splits into many different chains, connects back to itself in different places. Uh, so it's pretty cool and I just, uh, just, you know, let you use your own imagination to know what it represents for you. Uh, for me it looks like an ant gallery or something like that. Now, uh, the question that we might raise is why do we have these different topologies? Uh, this is still ongoing research, but if you, if you consider the co-occurrences time window, the, the irregularities or the differences in topologies will come from the fact that some of the clients will be noisier than others, so they will be generating more traffic than some other IPs. The other thing is that some IPs will be looking up a more diverse spectrum of domains. So some of them will be only doing DGA lookups, some others will be doing a mix of benign sites and DGAs or other things. And then finally, the nature of the uh, DGA algorithm and the malware will also have like, some differences. So some of them will be uh, looking up domains at a certain rate and some others will be uh, looking up domains uh, again uh, from day to day or from the uh, period to period. Now the final model we want to discuss is the analysis of the ASN network and how we use it to detect maliciousness on the internet. So all of us know what the ASN network is. An ASN is a collection of prefixes that are under a, um, a single uh, routing authority. And then you can uh, build your own graph by using open source uh, data sets, which are the BGP routing tables. And then the size of this data set will be around 46,000 uh, ASN numbers and 500,000 plus BGP prefixes. Now how do you build it? It's pretty simple. So you'll have a node for every ASN and then you'll have an edge between an ASN and its upstream uh, providers. And then if you take the one entry from the BGP table, those are the, the fields that are of interest to you, the prefix and the AS path from which you extract the edges. In order to build this graph, we can use a homemade library, Python library. Here a very quick example of how you can create you know, the visual graph that you see on the right. So three nodes added with the connected by three edges. And then in order to transform this text data into 3D visual representation, we use some particle physics, very simple. Not going to dig deeper into the details, but essentially the main idea is that if you have two nodes that are connected, they're going to attract each other. If you have two nodes that are disconnected, they're going to repel each other. This is what it looks like. At first, all the nodes are like placed in the same position in the center or like a random fashion, doesn't really matter. Um, and then you let the physics run. So as you can see, clusters are starting to appear and all the, the regions that are more densely connected are going to stick together. So if you apply that with GPU acceleration on the huge ASN graph, which is you know, a pretty large graph, you obtain something like this. So this is a fascinating view of the ASN network or the, or the internet uh, uh, in general. Uh, we have a very dense core which corresponds to the tier one providers and then around them you'll have the tier two providers and then on the outskirts you'll have all of these small hosting providers or ISPs that are only having upstream uh, neighbors. So this is a, again, it's a very fascinating view of the, of a dull data set you might say, but using visualization you can see some really uh, cool uh, uh, perspectives. This one reminds me of the birth of a star or a galaxy. Again, it's another view of the ASN network. And then another one here. You can see the clusters uh, of, of uh, ASNs for certain countries or certain... Uh, uh Speaking of countries, uh, we can also break down that view at the country level. So here you're looking at the Ukrainian AS network. So for instance, here on the bottom of the screen, you have RETN, so 9002. I've heard it's the Ukrainian Comcast. You guys might know better. Um, and basically, um, you can see how certain countries you know, try to plug as close as possible to the core in order to get the best connectivity. And it's, it's really interesting because it helps us make a parallel of what happened to certain countries where the whole connectivity went down for a couple of days, like Syria, for example. Um, and you can, you can see that some countries like, rely on main sources like, uh, that are belong to the core. 
And then uh, the final part is talking about using the ASN network and how to track maliciousness. So the investigation starts with monitoring domains and IPs. And then one dimensional approach would be to fingerprint the IP ranges and see that they have the same setup. And finally, we wanted to look at the second dimension, which is the graph approach. So taking uh, a pool of IPs we observed over a long period of time that were delivering the same malware samples, we saw that they were clustered in two main chunks that shared all the same server setup. So these are clearly set up in bulk and in advance to serve this uh, malicious campaign. Now you might say, okay, these are just like IPs uh, that are random. The thing is they are all related uh, through the graph topology. So the siblings at the top, they share the same uh, parents or upstream providers, and the ones in red are the ones hosting this malicious payload. This was taken from the Ukrainian IP space. A month and a half later, we saw that the structure shifted. So one of the upstream providers uh, stopped advertising its prefixes of, of its children, and more of the ASNs started uh, uh, hosting this malicious payload. So again, these are evas evasive measures used by these criminals just to kind of stay under the radar or evade uh, blacklisting by security companies. Now, the thing is, we wanted to scale this and automate it, so we applied it with our visualization and graph approach, and the idea is to detect maliciousness uh, from the ASN graph. Exactly, and when we, when we study graph topology, one very interesting feature is the degree of the nodes, which is pretty much a number of connections. Here, very briefly, uh, you see a color code on all the nodes, depending on the number of incoming and outgoing uh, connections that they have. For example, uh, blue node is sync node, only incoming connections. Red node is a source node, only outgoing connections. And leaf, only like the, red, the green ones, are only one uh, out outgoing connection, and the rest are pretty much internal nodes. And when we apply the SPN model, here's what happens. Basically, we only select the peripheral nodes, which are the nodes who don't have any incoming connections, and their closest siblings. So that gives us pretty much, like in other words, um, a, a graph that is the, the suburbs, or like the outskirts of the graph. Now we can apply that uh, to the Ukrainian AS network. So as you can see here, the core is completely getting pruned. Um, and as you can see in a minute, right, right here, all right. Um, so that allows us pretty much to remove all the, yeah, the core of the graph. And then finally, you can select some candidates uh, that respond to the topology that you're looking for. For instance, these ones. So you can see here a couple of leaves connected to the same parents. So there's still a lot of candidates, so a better approach um, to, uh, to explore the suspicious ASNs would be to start from one known suspicious ASN and actually figure out if it responds to the same local topology. Final thoughts for a conclusion. Um, first, uh, we obviously it's very hard to dig in, into all the details of our research in 20 minutes. However, we hope we convey you know, new ways and unique approach uh, to security. We hope to inspire you because graph uh, theory in general is so wide and can be applied to so many different kinds of problems that you certainly have your own use case as well. And we hope that we'll get some feedback and collaborate um, and hear your ideas about, you know, cool data visualization applied to security. So these are some of our uh, previous uh, conferences. We we'll invite you to check them out and maybe uh, we can discuss possibilities of collaboration. And we are hiring, so if you like data analysis on malware, uh, data, DNS, or IP space, or you're a good software developer, just talk to us. And that was it, so thanks again for having us. And uh, if you have any questions, we're here for that. Thank you. Thank you.